Hello everyone, welcome to Semicontour. Today, let's talk about marking process. Marking process is to write some information on package surface. There are two major methods of marking. One is ink marking and the other one is laser marking. Ink marking has been common for a long time. But now, laser marking is the most popular choice. Ink marking uses rubber stamp and ink. It engraves characters, numbers, and symbols on rubber stamp. Typically, ink color is white because mold compound is black. So, white ink is easy to read. First step is to remove some kinds of oily material on package surface. Because molding compound has this oily material to make mold cap is released easily from mold chase during mold process. You can imagine waffle making. You spray oil first before pouring flour mixture into waffle iron. It makes it easy to take out waffle from waffle iron. Same things for molding process. But this oily material on package surface prevent ink putting on package with good adhesion. So, it is necessary to remove before ink marking. Second step is to apply ink on rubber stem. It can be done by tapping the stem onto the ink pad. Third step is to stamp rubber stem with ink on package surface. First step is to cure to dry liquid ink. There is ink marking which does not use rubber stem, and it is inkjet marking. Yes, it is like inkjet printer, but on package surface instead of paper. Next method is laser marking. Like ink marking, it also writes characters, numbers, and symbols on package surface, but by using laser instead of ink. Laser marking removes very small amount of mold compound at package surface instead of putting ink on package surface in ink marking. Laser marking is very straightforward. It does not need to make rubber stamp and does not need to change rubber stamp for new information. Because laser marking can change marking information just by modifying drawing in the marking machine. Most cases, marking is made on the surface of molding compound. In this case, NDR laser with 1064 nanometer wavelengths is the most popular. But sometimes it is on dye backside like vapor CSP or exposed dye package. In this case, laser remove a very small part of dye surface by using green laser with 532 mm wavelengths. It is also used for wafer ID as well. Nowadays, packages need to include more and more information through marking. One example is 2D barcode. It is also called QR code in other areas. Because 2D barcode can include much more information than combination of characters, numbers, and symbols. It is often used for unilevel traceability, which is required for automotive applications. Automotive means car, and car is closely related with human's life. So, quality control is much tighter than smartphone. When package for automotive has a failure, people have to analyze and trace all information. 2D barcode contains this information about package. Information can include lot number, manufacturing factory, manufacturing date and shift of substrate, diatech adhesive, mold compound, and so on. But it is not only for automotive, and smartphone also use this 2D barcode for some SIP packages for RF devices. You also can see 2D barcode on substrate strip or wafer for unit level traceability. I hope this can help to understand basic marking process. Have a nice day and see you again soon. Bye bye.